Right, today's video is on the ultimate swivel base setup. We've sold swivel bases for years. We've sold the Rusty Lee singles and the doubles and a few other bits that tie that whole process in. Well, Rusty Lee's just brought out a sliding swivel with a few benefits, which we will show you as we put them in. And then a couple of other things that make swivel bases really uh, easier and just more functional and better to use. So Mitch over there, currently checking his Instagram, no doubt. So we've got the standard Rusty Lee single swivel beat seat base. We'll show you how to fit that. So these work with a leisure battery. That's a question we get asked quite a lot, as long as your leisure battery is not too deep, if you've got a nice slimline one, but most people put them in a transporter anyway. Over here, we've got the bracket for the lower handbrake. There's a few different versions of these on the market, but as is slightly more than the others, but it is by far the best quality. It's the way it's built and welded. They just don't flex. The cheap ones flex when you're trying to put your handbrake on and off. That's a lower handbrake. So that's to help you lower your handbrake for when your seat swivels. And then this cover here is so you don't have to cut down your existing one. It just looks nice on OEM. Um, so when you lower your handbrake, you don't have all the garish mechanism and stuff that you'd see. But again, Mitch will show you how to fit that. And then over here, this is the new Rusty Lee sliding swivel seat base. So everybody probably knows about these because we've advertised and, and done videos on the uh, Rusty Lee swivels before, but this is a new sliding version so great idea the beauty of this is there's other similar ones on the market but the reason why i like this one so much or we, we're so impressed with it is the fact that all the locking points are spring mounted so as you unscrew them they pop up like that and everything's all stays in there everything stays in place the other beauty of this one is all the fixings on the outside so when you've got your double sweep seat base we'll show you this in more detail later when you get your double swivel seat or your double seat sorry in position there you can access the inside of the seat and you don't have to like go fish around inside to access these to be able to swivel the base so i'm going to hand you over to mitch now if he's finished checking his instagram they will do an install video to show you how this whole setup works Hello, today's video, as Andy said, we're doing the swivel seat bases, the double and the single. So we'll get started by taking the double seat out. So our first step is we've got to undo the eight 16 millimeter nuts. As you can see, they're around here. Also, you'll need to pop off these trims to get access to the others and some wires. So we'll grab our ratchet. So there's our nuts undone. And then we've got a bracket with a T30 screw to undo for all the wires and plugs. So there's two bolts that hold it in. One at the top of the bracket, one at the bottom. Let's get those undone. And then on some models, such as the T6.1, they've got various extra connectors that you'll need to unplug uh, relating to the seat. And then once you've done that, you can take your seat out. Next, remove the seat. I'm gonna get both seats stripped at the same time. So the next step is I'm gonna grab a 13 millimeter and then we're gonna undo the four bolts to hold the seat down to the seat base. So you've got two at the back and then two at the front of the seat. You may find you need to pump your seat up a bit to gain access. With the four fixings undone for the seat, you'll find that you most likely do have some wires to unplug. And then you can lift out your seat. See, this one's a little bit lighter. So now we've got both seats out, we're gonna do the handbrake relocation. So we've got to lower it down. We have a bracket for this, which I'll show you how to install. Obviously, if you've got a manual, make sure your vehicle's you know, in a gear or it's secure, it's not gonna roll away when you set your handbrake off, because we're gonna dismantle this. So if you're an auto, it's a little bit easier because you leave it in park. So I've got a trim tool or a hose tool here because there's a little clip that holds this panel on here. So I'll be opening the clip up to allow it, me to slide off this cover. As you can see here, here's your clip. Ideally, what you need to do is get in there and just bend it open slightly and then slide away. This part just lifts up and out it comes. So now with the handbrake exposed, you've got two 13 millimeter nuts here, which we're going to undo. With those two nuts removed, you can lift out the handbrake, like so. So now we're going to install the bracket and get it all built back up. With the bracket done up, just check you've got clearance. Sometimes you've got a little bit of play in them and you find that they will foul. So just like I say, nice and easy, loads of room. So now we can install the, the fully assembled bracket, like so. 
and then use the original nuts onto the bracket. Tighten up the nuts and again check the operation. You'll find that with some vans you're going to have to adjust this. Ideally I would recommend adjusting the one underneath the van which is about here underneath the vehicle. That way you, you can use the easily accessible adjuster for when your handbrake stretches and you finally need to tighten it slightly. Next step, we're installing our handbrake cover. As simple as clipping it in, like so. So with the cover installed, we now need to put on the handbrake handle, but you're gonna find you're gonna to need to trim it slightly. So what I'll do now is I'll put it on, do a test fit, find out what, how far I need to trim, and then I'll get it cut and show you how far I've cut. You'll find that everyone would do it slightly differently and uh, then we can get it to clip on nicely. So as you can see, it's already quite tight in here and the bracket is in the way of installing this nicely. So I'll start measuring up and get it cut. So now we've got this cover marked out, I'm gonna cut it out and then do another test fit. And we might find we need to cut some more out, but we'll just keep on going until it fits nicely. We're in. So I'll take it back out now, just clean up where I've cut and then do a final fit. Okay, so because I've got the Alpine sub kit in my van, these bolts need undoing because the new swivel plates are gonna go on and they're gonna be a bit of interference. So just gaining a bit more room. So then when we put the seat base on, it will clamp it back down anyway. Next, we're gonna install our single seat base. Make sure you don't trap any of the wiring and it will drop into the original locations for the battery seat. Like right, so, and then we'll spin it slightly just so we gain access to it, do up all the bolts. With the seat base now located, we'll put our nuts and bolts in and get them done up. All right, now we're at this stage, we can take off the supplied nuts and bolts, and then they'll be used to install the seat to the seat base. Popping our seat onto the base, try and get it lined up roughly, remembering to plug in any wiring that was unplugged beforehand. So using the supplied fixings, we've got the nut and bolt and two washers. We'll get the seat lined up and start bolting it in. So I'm putting the bolt in from the bottom and then the nut will sit on top. So I'm just loosely putting them in to start with just to get them all lined up. Now with all four loosely and we can get them done up. So I'm using a 5mm Allen key and a 13mm uh, socket. There we go. So moving back over to the passenger seat, we've got all these plugs that came off the bracket that sat like that. We need to actually get rid of this bracket and then tuck all the plugs under the carpet or rubber floor, whichever you've got. So it's just a case of you unplug them like so, and then you'll need to unplug it out of the, the mount and then plug them all back in. If you do these one by one, that way you won't get them mixed up. So we can get rid of that bracket and then just neatly tuck these out of the way. There's a channel within the the bodywork of the van, so you've got a bit of room that you can put everything through. It doesn't matter that you've got a slight lump. It's a hospital job, no? Yeah. So the next step, we'll be removing these four studs. So with that, you need a 22 millimeter socket, ideally a deep one, and it's just a case of slide them over and then undo. Grab your seat base, it's quite heavy and drop it in the right area, like so. And then we'll start installing the nuts and bolts, get it lined up, tighten it all down, and I'll show you how it works. So you get a few bolts and washers with the kit. First thing we're gonna do is put a washer on each of the front studs. I've undone these locking screws to allow me to slide this lower section into the right location. As you can see, lines up with all the factory studs and then we'll use the original nuts on here and then the bolts that come with it there for the back half which you gain access to by sliding this a little bit further out and you'll use these four holes here. Okay now we're lined up we'll start putting all the nuts on the front just again loosely so we can get it all perfectly lined up with all the eight nuts and bolts. Grab your bolts and drop them in and then thread in again keeping it loose for now. So now with the 16mm Socket, we're going to do the front, and it's a 17mm for the rear. 
So now we've got the nuts and bolts done up, the seat plate is secure. As you can see, we've got a nice sliding mechanism. This is currently facing the other way around. So I'm just gonna show you the different settings you can have it at. So we'll start off with the original location, you know, the driving position. So you've got the, the five locators for when you're driving. You know, you press these down, get it all lined up. They'll lock in place, like so. And then if you want to bring it out, you slide it all the way out, you can then do a full 180. And you have the option now of locating it here by this single center tightening screw. So that's now located. So that's a fixed position if you ever wanted to slide the seat out and sit, say whether you've got a table there or something. So you've got three different ways of having this seat. So it's nice and uh, diverse. And then we'll next do our next step of installing the seat to the plate. Where are you studs? I'm right here. So with the seat now installed on the seat plate, we can get the 17 mil nuts that were supplied with the kit, get those installed and then we're done. <laughs> Out of the way. A lot of room in here. Come on, get out of the way. Sorry. So now we've got the seat adjusted and done. I'll show you the different positions. So we're sliding the seat all the way back. Yeah, and I've got a rubber floor, so it's a little bit harder to slide back. You do your 180. And then slide it back. <laughs> and doing this screw and then we'll slide it forward there's different positions you have to get it in to secure it makes it look comfortable I am comfortable yeah so there we go that's all installed now so a couple of things I don't know if Mitch had mentioned these won't work if you've got a heated seat because of the wiring so bear that in mind uh, but there's no swivel seat base out there that does because of the, obviously the seat has to swivel and you'd stretch your wiring so the other thing I just thought I'd show you because we had an inquiry about this is how you lock it in position you can lock it in this position here so slid out so this is if you are you know, you've got your camper table here or you've got u-shaped furniture set up or all the Ivano tables that we've shown previously you want it set up this way so that's the biggest kind of bonus of having this sliding swivel seat other than they're so much easier to swivel you can lock it back so it's right back in this position and then obviously you can spin it around and lock it back in the driving position you cannot drive with it like this and you cannot drive with it locked back there so when you lock it into this position thankfully you've got this nice access hole here and those metal tubes that are underneath here that are going down into the vehicle that's what you're lining it up with so this here would need to slide that way towards the seat a bit and then you if you just keep applying pressure you'll feel it slot into that hole that's just there then that will lock it into the first position in this place and then it won't be able to move back and forth when you sit on it if you want to lock it in and then when you're locking it in the back position you're actually lining up that one there with this one here so oh. So same again, when you slide it, slide it back, you just apply some pressure to this as you move the seat backwards and forwards and you're lining that pin up with that there. And as you slide it back, you'll feel it locate its way in and then you can twist it to do it up. Hopefully you've got this nice spring action so you're not going to lose the bolt or it's going to you know, fall out or be somewhere else in the vehicle. But you can just apply some pressure on the lock and then you can just lock that one in. You don't need to lock them all in. You only need one to hold it in place so it doesn't slide back and forward. So all these things that Mitch fitted here are available on our website and also very soon on the Transport HQ Europe website, so for left-hand drive version. So this seat is currently M1 crash tested. In the future, Lee will get it TUV approved. We also have a left-hand drive version which we're going to test in one of our European vehicles. The lower handbrake bracket and the plastic covers for the handbrake have all been tested and we will be shipping the left-hand drive version over to Transport HQ Europe so everything is available shortly for left-hand drive and right-hand drive. These are all available now on the UK website for right-hand drive. They are selling really fast though so they're quite often out of stock. I think they're currently out of stock depending when you're watching this video. On the listing for where the item is you can pop your email address in and you'll get stock notifications when stuff comes back in stock. Some of the bits we have but I think at the moment the swivel seat base is sold out because they're selling as fast as they come in. Hopefully you found that video useful whether you're looking for a sliding swivel or a standing swivel definitely consider the Rusty Lee range but quality build really well finished easy to use. Please do press that like button if you're thinking of getting a swivel seat base or you've already got one or you want to upgrade one or you know anybody else that's considering getting a swivel seat base or your conversion company is working on a van for you and you think this is a swivel seat base that might suit your needs please do share this video with them please do subscribe to the channel loads more videos coming i say this every time but we're constantly trying to aim to get a video out every week 
wherever possible so please do subscribe to the channel and click that little bell to get notifications when new videos come out another one on suspension come in and also on the flush sliding windows that have been in this van now for a while that video is ready to go so that'll probably come out next week hope you've enjoyed it and thanks for watching so adjusting the handbrake underneath the van as mentioned just thought we'd show you how to do this so at the moment as you can see it's quite loose just because we've relocated the handbrake into a lower position so we need to move this nut further towards the front of the vehicle um, and then it will adjust the handbrake to the right sort of tension grabbing an adjustable or some grips uh, you want to pop it onto this part of the cable and then i've got a 10 mil spanner to adjust the nut So with the nut adjusted all the way to the end, on, my, on this particular van, um, we'll find that we might need to do some minor adjustment in the cab now, but at least uh, if there's any cable stretching in the future, you don't have to get back under the van, you can do it all from the front.